Yo, 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 what's going on, sports family? And we back again with another at the line post game bubble recap presented by National Sports Chat, man, produced by TOV Sports. And today, you know, we're in the building, man. I got my dog all the way from the West Coast, the best coast, Nate yeah, checking in with sure. me. Man, how you um, doing, man? Man, we, man bro, I'm good. I'm blessed. Back at it, man, for another day. Happy to be back. Man, for sure. We about to get into these games, man. We, we, we just seen – well, I, I'm I'm going to wait till we get to it, but we just seen a <laughs> team almost try to, you know, take it over, but it didn't happen. But we're going to kick it off right now with Toronto versus the Raptors, man. I'm Toronto Let's do versus it. the Raptors. <laughs> man, I, I picked Toronto. <laughs> I, I picked Toronto to win that one. So, you know, I got to own up and say the Celtics, you know, they're going up 2-0. I might have to end up changing my pick, but, you know. Yeah. I like what I like what I saw from the Raptors, but it's just looking like they don't have the talent when it comes down the stretch. Yeah, man. Off rip, you got Marcus Smart hitting big buckets like that, man, off the stretch. So it I when I uh watched the game, man, it just was it, it just showed me like all right, Toronto, they was just missing open shots, bro. Like it was mm -hmm. it wasn't bad looks, you know. Um it was just well, open open. The thing is for me with, with Boston, you know, like you, you look at somebody like Marcus Smart and like he's just such a plus defender for them. But, you yeah. know, they don't even necessarily need him to score on most games. But the fact that you can have him come off the bench, not not even come off the bench, even start right now and have to Gordon Hayward and yeah. add like 15 points, maybe, you know, 20 points mm -hmm. like he did the other night, five threes. That's a big time luxury that mo I don't know if any other team has. Facts. And one thing I can say about the Celtics, though, right now, even though, like I said yesterday, if they go up 2-0, and mm -hmm. I feel like the most that the Toronto could do is like take this to six because I don't see them beating uh, Boston four times in a row. Yeah, I, I don't see them be. I don't see them getting four games out of this. You know, I, I definitely see it probably going uh, six now. I mean, yeah. I think uh, that's a good play right there, uh, Robert yeah, Williams. Sure. I mean, you look at Robert Williams; he brings a different dynamic than Tice. He's so athletic, yeah. very athletic. You know, he brings a yeah. different dy dynamic to that lineup. You look at him right there, getting dunk, you know, man. creating the action. I like what I saw from him. If they, can, if they can develop him, man, that's a good big for the future. Do you think uh, that the the lack of depth will hurt them and, like, moving later into the playoffs? Like, even, like, say if they get to the finals. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. not having – even though Gordon Hayward, for what he worth, you know, he, he wasn't really doing well. I, I would mm -hmm. say he was doing a lot of stuff that didn't really show up on the stat sheet. You feel me? Like right. him in the game, I felt like the offense just flowed better. And it, mm -hmm. nah, you wouldn't directly see that from his stats, but um, you could see it from like the, the points per game when he plays and stuff like that. But do you think like mm -hmm. the lack of depth, depth will uh, hurt them um, moving forward in the playoffs? See, you know, Gordon's definitely a big loss, but – you know, what show what they showed me yesterday was like if they dig deeper into their bench, they got some guys that are ready to perform, like like Big Robert Williams. You know, like you, you don't expect him to be a guy to step up off the bench, but you got yeah. someone like Brad Wanamaker who comes off in hoops. You know, Marcus Smart, he's looking like a starter on pretty in pretty much any other team. He's like their yeah. Draymond, you know, but probably yeah. a better offense, better jumper. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the playoffs, you also got a shorter rotation. You know, yeah. it's, it's Jason Tatum, it's Jalen Brown, it's Kimball Walker. Those guys going to have to play 35, 40 minutes a night if you want to yeah. win a title. But, uh, you know, a dude like where, Siakam, where do you like that, there. Where do you, where do you rank them in duos in the league? Because I know the big thing right now is just duos. Do you think they're like top five duo or like? Uh, most definitely. I mean, yeah, I, I have to say they, they're a top five duo. Yeah. They're the, uh, the East Coast version of. They're the East Coast version of uh, the uh, Lakers. I mean, the Celtics. No, the Clippers, my bad. Because okay. you got Kawhi yeah, Leonard, you know, and then you got Paul George, and you got mm -hmm. those two, uh, LeBron and AD. I mean, we could say we could say Giannis and Chris Middleton, but, I mean, is that a great duo? I wouldn't necessarily look at that as one of the better duos. So yeah. I definitely have to group them. They're, they're what you want with your prototypical NBA right now. They, they yeah. both can shoot. They're both long. They both athletic, you know, so I could definitely yeah. see that them being one of the best uh, duos. And the thing I like about them too is really they could defend. You feel me? And they could defend all the way at the for, from the perimeter in. So that's one thing I definitely like about them is even though they very, you know, they their offense is uh, intact, they could definitely do it on the defensive end too. You know, so.
Well, uh, well, well I think, think when your best step player for Toronto, like. All right. Well, one thing I'm gonna say about uh Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, when your best players can score, but also yeah. defend at a high level, that's a luxury, you know, that most teams aren't gonna have. They're both six eight, six nine guys, you know. So yeah, that's definitely a luxury for them. That you know, when they get to the next rounds, that'll help them out big time. You you know, you got switchability, versatility. Mm-hmm. They can play make. You know, Jason Tatum can end up with like thirty two and six. Jalen Brown can end up you know stuffing the stats with like twenty six and four. You know. And that's yeah. a big time thing. But uh, can you ask that question one more time? I said, who do you think needs to step up for Toronto? Because even in game one, in this game right here, they're not like, like hard, duh, I mean, hard L's. You feel me? Like, they're, they're not close. You know what I'm saying? They're so, very close. So I mean, it's like one or two plays that's like losing them the game. So who do you think? Because uh, from what I see in this game, OG is definitely, he's definitely doing definitely. this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I, well, I think that. that uh, Serge Ibaka was a big help for them, too. Um, but, you know, if you got to say somebody to step up, it'd have to be Pascal. Like, I was yeah. watching the game yesterday, and, you know, like you just see there, Jason Tatum, has he just got an array of moves and plays at a different speed. Like Siakam, he's starting to play at the same speed. You know, his spin moves are getting a little predictable because he doesn't really have too many dribble moves. So next year, yeah. I mean, this offseason, you're going to have to go back to the drawing board. But – I mean, yeah. they played a pretty solid game. You don't expect somebody like Marcus Smart. You don't expect anybody to hit five just, three. They just smack like three of them joints. <laughs> like, they, exactly. Like, Toronto is just up seven, bro. Exactly. Like, so you, again, tough one. You don't really expect that. You know, they played hard, and the newbie's playing hard. It's good to yeah. see him develop. Um. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. When, when Smart hitting them like that, it's just time to go home. It, it, exactly. Like you, you know, know you're gonna. You're gonna. Is, the thing is, <laughs> those are the shots that you live with if you're a Toronto yeah. Raptors coach. Especially you feel me? Like that's what you live like, with, man. If he take us down with that, then... <laughs> exactly. If he's the one to take us out, then you know you got to live with it. You can't let Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown school you. Yeah. Facto. Facto. But I, I think this is definitely like. I feel like this is – even though I feel like uh, Tatum had his coming out party his rookie year when he played mm-hmm. uh, the Celtics LeBron. and he took them to seven, I feel mm-hmm. like this one is like like his coming out to that next level of play. Most like definitely, as I'm that, that guy. Yeah, like he already that all-star. Now it's time to like – I'm a star. I'm not going to say superstar yet, but – He's I'm, getting there. Yeah, I'm star level he, right He got now. a case. And I think uh, – you know, Kemba Walker, he didn't have his best game last night, but when it yeah. mattered in the clutch time, he did. Yeah, and I think that's big time ooh, for them because look at that. Of them. Snatch, <laughs> come here, speaking of them. You know, that's vintage Kemba Walker, what we've seen from yeah. him since college days. But, you know, you just look at, uh, at everything the Celtics have. Like, anybody can get hot, you know, yeah. and that's the crazy part for them. Like, anybody can get hot on any given occasion. You can get 30 from Kemba. You could definitely get 30 from Jason. You can probably get a smooth 30 from uh, Jalen Brown on a very good day. But, yeah. you know, uh, they got so much versatility, man. It, it'll help them out. I'm not sure if they see the Lakers just with, mm-hmm. you know, given their experience and size, that it'll be an easy matchup. But I think mm-hmm. that I could see a series like that or against the Clippers going six or seven. Like, those sure. young dudes hungry. So, you know, I, yeah. I, big respect to the Celtics, the Raptors. You know, that they just got to finish out games. Yeah, That's man. It. And I think it's like – it's just coming. I'm not going to say champ. Well, I could say championship slump. Like, it's just coming off that championship. And they did it at a high level during the seasons, like, to where they felt like, all right, we don't need a start, which they mm-hmm. really don't if they really play the Raptors brand of basketball. Like, they were exactly. really winning these games. But uh, I don't know, man. We, we, we'll we see what happens. I don't think they'll be able to run off four in a row. So, like, even no. win four out of five. So, like, playing we'll, we'll, best, I just feel like their best players aren't better than the Celtics' best players when it comes down to it. You know, it's right. no disrespect to them, but like you said, they're trying to win it with no star. That's something that's been hard in the league for a long time. Very few teams have really done it. So, you know, uh, I think Pascal is better suited as a second option. I don't think he's the yeah. best player on a championship contender, but, you know, he can still develop and get better. But right now, I just don't think he has the offensive package to, like, carry that team. Fact though, man. Let's get into this next one, man. A, a winner go home. Uh, nice. and, and this was every bit of a game that I didn't think we was gonna see. I I definitely never thought I was gonna see another seventy eight to eighty game. You know what I'm saying? Like those not in the modern games, NBA. Yeah, that don't even happen in the league no more. So mm-hmm. I mean, you know, them game game sevens, the collar gets tight. 
You know, in 2016, when the Cavs played the Warriors game seven, final score was like 92-89, you know, because it's just defense, you know, the the anxiety, the the rush, the the whatever thrill of that game is something different. I think even when the Spurs played the Heat uh, that game seven, it was pretty low scoring affair. So, you know, dudes, collars getting tight, but we that's how you see who really could pull it out. Yeah, and that that was one thing that that stood out to me was like you said the college nigga, uh, guys college getting tight just seeing mm-hmm. from what what Murray and and Mitchell was able to do for the previous six games to what they were able to do in this game and you got you had Jokic really leading the way like if you really like skill his thirty points out bro like. That thirty with eight, like they only score eighty points, and he dropped thirty. Right, so that's why well, he, he damn near dropped a fifty ball for real. Like, I think that Jokic showed, like, regardless how well Jamal and Donovan Mitchell was playing, I still think he's the best player in this series. Like when yeah. he's at his best, that's how they're gonna win games and win series. Like the moves yeah. he was putting on Rudy Gobert, a defensive player of the year, and you know he's yeah. at least trying on defense, which is uh encouraging. <laughs> but you know, it, it was it was a nice it was a nice big uh, battle yesterday. I saw Rudy make yeah. some good plays, but I think it just showed like Jokic is definitely the best player on the floor. Yeah, and and one thing I forgot which game it was. I think it was probably like the second or the third game, mm-hmm. and I never, but I never, I guess I never really paid attention to Jokic's game like that, like real tough to where mm-hmm. he don't really he don't even dunk like that. And Not he games, can barely dunk. Had, yeah, he had like three dunks, and everybody was going <laughs> crazy because it's like, yo, like it, it's um, so it's rare, like, man. Is it is a video right playing there. on your end? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Can you? No, nah, it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's, it's right uh, now. It's, uh, it's in the first quarter. Jokic just hit a nice three. That's one thing you know. A lot of people don't like about Rudy Gobert. He doesn't stretch the floor at all. You know, yeah. he, given his defense, you know, it's nice to have. It's a luxury, but. You know, not spreading the floor for them, who they host a lot of threes. You know, it's, it's definitely a different style. But yeah, Michael Porter Jr. Page. Uh, Michael you know, refresh, refresh your page. Oh, that's a nice three, George Niang. He literally only shoots threes. That's the crazy part. He rarely shoots layups. He's six nine, but you know, he doesn't yeah, find yeah. himself around the rim a lot. Yeah, we back at it. Jordan Clarkson. You know, they didn't you end gotta, up uh, turn the audio up, Dave. They didn't audio, end up audio, winning, audio. but now I'm talking about for me. Yep. Hey. But yeah, See, Michael Porter Jr. That's a good you, pass. Can you hear me? Thumbs up. All right. Yeah, but man, Porter definitely played a big role in this game alongside of uh, Jokic. I don't know if you said it yet, but I was refreshing when you yep. uh, brought up Porter. But he mm-hmm. definitely played a, a good uh, game alongside of Jokic and Loki. He did what he had to do. My bad, I can't hear you, but I but low key no. since he just came up across the uh the screen, Clarkson too, bro. Clarkson had a, a crazy like a series, man, just contributing to every game. And it was one of those situations I was just looking like, damn, he got 18, <laughs> damn, he got 20, damn, he got 21. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I don't know, I, I guess I, I mean, I, I know Clarkson could score, but it, a lot of times I like. For guys like that, I just don't expect a lot out of him, but he definitely came out and uh, did what he had to do this series for sure. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, they had some definitely – they did well with what they had. I don't think they should have blown that 3-1 lead, but I think they did well given what they had. I mean, you had issues with Bogdanovich, who was the team's second leading scorer, big-time important playmaker. And then, you know, you got Royce O'Neal playing hard, and he's not usually what you would look at as a – uh, as a scorer or a contributor, but they had guys step up. Um, you know, it sucks to lose a 3 1 series. Nobody ever wants to lose a 3 1 series, but they definitely had guys step up when it mattered. Like Mike Porter Jr., he was playing terrible defense early on in the series. I think he grew toward the end of this series, most definitely. Um, you know, Jamal, I mean, uh, Gary Harris coming back was big time for the Nuggets, but, you know, got to give credit for Donovan Mitchell, as you see there, with a nice yeah. side step. You know, yeah. I found it kind of weird that he went to the back and had to decompress yesterday. <laughs> you know, he put on a little Kyle Lowry on me, but it looked like it worked. His third quarter, he came out high, as you see there with another layup. Back though. And one thing I can say, though, about um, Porter is that, you know, he was he was basically thrown into the fire for real. Like, he didn't mm-hmm. really get, like, any, like, true burn out at, 
or I don't even think he probably got any at all during the season. Probably a little. He bit. got a, he got a little bit, you know, spurt, spot minutes. He started playing well regular. I mean, uh, in the bubble though, in the bubble, he had a few yeah. thirty point games in the bubble. But yeah, before yeah, that, right. you know, he definitely wasn't a part of the rotation. Yeah, so I feel like just being able to to play defense and play a high, high uh, level offense, well, mm-hmm. play offense at a high level. And being able to uh, play defense, I feel like that's where the stagger was between him because I I feel like he probably never felt that on that level before. You know For sure, saying? that playoff the playoff defense is a little different. You know, understanding those Fact. schemes. You know, he <laughs> he's been in the league, but he ain't really play. So Fact. you know, he he he's definitely taking a little minute time to do it uh, to find out the defensive schemes and you know when to go under a screen, when to go over or something. But he's figured it out. He's a great athlete. But as you see there, Rudy Gobert, you know, like I said, Rudy Gobert, he'll give you what he gives you. He'll give you some block shots. He'll give yeah. you some athletic plays. But, you know, when it comes to it, he's not a reliable offensive option. And as you can see, Jokic is, uh, you know. Yeah. We'll, but that's a nice zero step, though. Like, yeah. I'd like to see Rudy do more Go, of that. Gobert, be, he be like, even though, I don't know, I just don't like Gobert. And I don't know, he be balling, man. Like, he, he do he do what he have to do, man. Like, and that's mm-hmm. one thing I can't say about him. He don't never try to do nothing he can't do. Like, he just always set the screens. Like, I think he got like the most screens in the NBA. He just yeah, set he the does. screens, roll to the cup. You know what I'm saying? And but he doesn't have that bag that you see that Jokic has right there. Uh, you know the floaters. <laughs> and and we'll see, we'll see that final bucket obviously a little later, but you know Jokic got the three. His jumper was looking great yesterday. He got the mid range. I was talking to my father actually, and he was telling me, um, you know that like his little step back kind of starts reminding him of Dirk's a little bit. He's starting to get yeah. that little one legged step back in his bag, shooting yeah. threes, you, shooting mid range. Uh, he he doesn't. He definitely uh, pulls up off one leg, bro. Like all the time. Three. You're from three, from nigga, off from a floater anywhere, bro. Like mm-hmm. he just, I don't know, bro. He just able to. I feel like that that Euro basketball. I don't know why, but even Lucas sometimes he he pulled mm-hmm. that out. Like he'd go up off one leg, and I don't, I don't know. I, I guess see that was a great space. My bad to cut you off. That was a pivotal play of the game right there. Yeah. Cause that should have been an and one, and they could have yeah. been up one. But this is just great offense by Jokic right there. Hey, pump uh, fake, uh, two pump uh, fakes, and nothing uh, but net uh, with a nice hook little hook. floater. Yeah. That's a seven footer, man. And that's a man, Donovan. You just got to be a little one, more careful. But yeah, this like, is one of the worst clock management plays I have ever, ever seen in my life, bro. Yeah, that's why I, I he <laughs> knew he had to get back. And if they would have lost that game, bro, I don't think he would have been able to live with himself because – well, Dog. it could – well, Torrey <laughs> shouldn't have, but also Jamal Murray because what are you doing passing the ball? You're the yeah, point like, guard, that bro. Out. Like, you see they ain't fouling. Slow them. down. They, clock out. They, they moving off adrenaline, you feel me? So Just slow just down, like, man. That, that would have yeah. been one of the worst ways to ever lose a 3-1 because they can't. They literally came back from 3-1 and had it locked up. But if they would have made that mm-hmm. shot, man, them dudes would have yeah. – they would have had to blow it up. Hey, they Dave, had the, Dave, the next game is Milwaukee versus the Heat. Check uh, House of Highlights. They should have dropped it. But, yeah, they uh, – It just finished, know. actually. It yeah. almost went to OT. Word. Ooh, Jimmy Butler, uh, watch it. Giannis got fouled. Giannis fouled Jimmy Butler when it was like 0-0 left. Damn. Two free throws to end it. That's the weakest Ooh. way to end the game, bro. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Who ended the game like that? I forgot what it was like. The Nug, the Lakers. I forgot what mm-hmm. game that was, but they ended it at the line. It was so soft, bro. It's but, weak. Uh, what What do you uh, expect out the Nuggets now? Because I know we briefly talked about it on the podcast the other day. We mm-hmm. spoke on both the teams, um, both situations going to the next round versus the Clippers. Mm-hmm. But um, shout out to the podcast, Mike and friends. Make sure y'all go over there, follow us on IG. And tune in to us the next new episode dropping tomorrow. So make sure y'all tune yes, in. Yes, sir. We're dropping all the videos, all our edits tomorrow <laughs> as well. So it's gonna Let's be a it. crazy day tomorrow. So make sure y'all tune into that. But no, nah, who? What, what do you think Denver is gonna be able to do against the Clippers? I mean, I look at Denver. They'll probably do it, give it six games off the strength of Jokic being a good playmaker, and the, uh, I think the Clippers struggle with big sometimes. But I do think that the Clippers' perimeter defense is suffocating when they want to be. You know, they'll get scored on, as you can see in the last Dallas series. Uh, Tim Hardaway has some good games. Seth Curry has some good games. However, 
when they're locked in, you know, Kawhi and PG and Reggie Jackson, Paul, I mean, Pat Bev, Marcus Morris, Zubots, they got some really good plus defenders. You know, Landry yes. Shamit's a solid <laughs> defender. I don't see um, Denver doing that. Oh, is this the last play? Yeah, this is the last oh, play. Not me. The full game, the full game. Babe. But, now, nah, one thing I can say, uh, too, just about that series is one thing I want to watch for is to see if – um, what Michael Porter will do because I know it's going to be a situation to where they're going to either have Kawhi or PG on him because he's a lethal part of that offense, you know. So mm-hmm. I want to see if he'll still be able to contribute or will Mike Malone have to bring him out the game because now he's like, not to say he didn't go against any de- elite defenders in that Utah mm-hmm. round, but I will. I'm not going to say that. I'm not about to. No, nah, he didn't go. No, against, he, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't go, go against any. He didn't go against any top defender for that. You feel me? So I want to nah. see him line up against somebody solid. That's really not. That's really in that playoff mode. Because now Kawhi is in that mode. I can't speak for PG because I mm-hmm. I don't know what PG we gotta does see it. We got we got yeah. See like it. I don't know what PG it. does in the playoffs, but I know Kawhi is in that mode right now. So it'll be interesting to see if because uh, that that'll let me be able to gauge what Michael Porter Jr. is because watching what Tatum did his rookie year and him mm-hmm. and him still leading the pack and being guarded by top players, you know. So I, that's one thing I definitely want to watch for. And also, I just want to see if Murray's able to hop out there. Well, here we go with the highlights. I think you're right, though, about uh, Michael, before we get into this next game. You know, Michael Porter Jr., he's definitely going to have to – you know, adjust to this different level of physicality. But I think that yeah. Michael Malone has no choice but to give him minutes because yeah. he has to grow in these type of spots. He's 6'10". He got a, a jumper. He got some good chemistry with Jokic. So you got to try to make him work. Yeah, most definitely. But, I feel like so, you, it, know, you just got to you just got to get good, quick, easy buckets with him. Like, just let yeah. him get. He can be a nice, like, uh, like, shooter, like literally coming off screens. He doesn't have to dribble the ball much. He can be a nice yeah. spot up shooter. Like he really has a perfect, a uh, uh, pretty nice form. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Drogic, bro. Like Drogic man, Drogic looking like <laughs> they best player on most occasions, Animal, bro. <laughs> he looking like they best Animal. player, man. Okay, Jimmy. But um, you're, so you're, you know, <laughs> the Bucks went down two zero in this game. So uh, you know, I'm not gonna say I changed my pick over there on Mike and friends. But, yeah. you know, it's looking pretty scary for my pick. You know, I picked yeah, the Bucks bro. to win this series. But, you know, Giannis did his thing in this one a little bit. I just think that uh, the Heat got a lot of scoring options, man. And if you, you know, as we watched the yeah. highlights in this, like Jimmy didn't really score the ball too often. Nice dunk and Her- steal from Hero turned it on. I see, oh, I yeah, Hero has like 17. Lennox turned, yeah, Olenek, he didn't. I don't know what Duncan Robinson did. Well, Drogic's, uh balled out too. But, yeah, um, Drogic had like 20, 25. I just yeah, think they have a lot of shooters, and right now their shooters are clicking. And also, my, uh, Milwaukee, yeah. Milwaukee jumps, <laughs> they jump at a lot of shots, as you can see there. You know, they yeah. give up a lot of threes, and they gave up a lot of threes during regular season, too. But, you know, they just relied on their offense to score. But, you know, in, in the case with a suffocating defense like the Heat, they got very versatile guys, and they got guys that try hard. You're not going to see the floor for yeah. Pat Riley or Eric Spolster if you don't play defense. So, you know, even a guy hey, like Aaron. Tyler Hero – Look, you know, that's a nice bucket. But these guys aren't – they're not afraid. And I don't think anybody, yeah, to your credit, is afraid of the Bucks and shit. Yeah, and I, I that's one thing we that I said yesterday, too, on the podcast, is that you could just tell, like, they're all dogs, bro. Like, they're mm-hmm. all dogs. They know, like, all right, we may not be the most talented out of everybody, but we're going to work just as hard as everybody. And no mm-hmm. matter what, we're going to live with them results, whether we, we lose or win, you know what I'm saying? So um, it'll be interesting, too, just to to see how this keeps unfolding. They, well, that's uh, a nice reflection of uh, just the Heat culture in general. You know, even when LeBron yeah. was there, you know, they, they treated him, you know, like they, they have to measure body fat percentage. You know, he, he learned what it was to really, like, work, I think, down in Miami. And I think, you know, that's just the type of culture that a lot of more teams should establish. Um, they reward guys too for working hard, which is how you establish a good culture like that. You know, like Kendrick Nunn, undrafted. Tyler Hero, not a high value pick, but he gained minutes. You know, Duncan Robinson, another story. Uh, Derrick Jones worked hard, got better. There's Drogic again. You know, like they develop their talent very well. Fact though, and one thing that that is interesting is 
uh, Miami and Boston are both six and zero in the playoffs right now. They know? are. So it only takes sixteen to do it. And it's uh, you know what I'm saying they ten away on, on mm-hmm. uh, both sides. So it, well, it, the Lakers be are going to join them pretty quick, but you know oh, yeah. on seven, so they just they just a little slower. But there's Duncan right there, you know, coming off a screen, lighting it up. He's Do you pretty- think that's going to affect uh, like the Eastern teams? Because as we see already, the the Western Conference, I feel like in the second round it'll catch up to speed. Just because right. I don't feel like it, like these games won't go five or six. I mean six Same. or seven, um, but. Do you think, like, say if they do go six or seven, do you think mm-hmm. just, uh, them sitting down and waiting for the West team to hurt the, the East finalist? I don't think it'll hurt because, honestly, I don't see – if whoever comes out the West, I see them winning the title. Uh, yeah. I don't think it'll really hurt them. If anything, they'll be a little more fresh because, you know, here, here's Chris Middleton right here. They The Bucks have some guys to make this a tough series, and mm-hmm. Toronto is going to be a tough series, even if these guys sweep – which I don't see happening. Um, they're going to be a little tired after these two series. And then whoever plays each other next round is definitely going to be beat up a little bit. So, yeah, you know. Sure. Man, they still got Iggy out there getting buckets. <laughs> when Iggy's scoring, it's That's a problem. That's crazy. Bro, they got There's the Tyler Hero Utah again off the screen. The third quarter. <laughs> Facts. Denver, Utah scoring the third quarter. What you going to do, Giannis? See, this. that's what He's, I want to see Giannis do more of, which yeah, he does already. Running. Just keep running the floor, bro. Because a lot of times, bro, they they not gonna be able to stop him either. Oh, that's a God. body right there. He See, Tyler jump. Hero, it, he's a nice playmaker too. If, yeah. if he can score, but he can also make plays, that's a nice luxury for a rookie. Yeah. And he like, bro, he talk. I I don't know why. I just love trash talking, bro. He talk. Man, Tyler oh, Hero, he, you know, he he can he, talk trash, but I'm not. I'm not usually with the white boys talking too much trash. He backing it up right now, though. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing. But one thing I can say, Garn again. He don't talk it unless it like it come to him. Like mm-hmm. you got to bring it to him. Okay. Cl- oh my god. See, that's like a that. big time three. Yeah. You're too far away. That's too much space. Bro, but Bro was probably go put him on the bench if he missed that. I'm like, come on, Rook. <laughs> okay. Good. See, there. See, off. those are those are what you would consider that's Her- a good defense right there. He right. He's right in Jay Crowder's face. Them dudes just making shots, man. Yeah. Damn, is Hero kind of like? Like slight weight pushing a point for them a little bit, like. <laughs> yeah, he is because Jimmy's not a point guard, and Kendrick yeah, Nunn. I think I don't know what's going on with Kendrick Nunn. He, he fall off the rotation like or is he injured? Today. Yeah, he only played like three minutes today, bro. Yeah, he just fell out the rotation, I guess. But that's a big time and one from Giannis tough. right there, trying to keep oh, him in the game. Man, Giannis, yeah. oh, he's got to he got to he got to grow a little bit. Like you know, he he got to grow. Definitely shooting, but just, you know, if he's going to be like Shaq, uh, you just got to find more of those opportunities. Like, you need to be closing people out, and you need to be getting deep post positioning and going with quick moves.